Thank you, Mr. Andre Ray, for bringing, giving this interview to us. Uh, we want to uh, first give us give you our uh, good feelings about what we heard just before because we had this chance to, to hear you performing this this morning. And the first thing we would like to ask you is how much of your feelings you, you did put in that performance in your music generally? Well, like when I first start my shows, like when I first started the show today, what I was mostly feeling was just nervous because I really wanted to do well in Milan because I've been waiting to come here. Um, but then, once I get past the first song, I just sort of fall into my own rhythm and mm -hmm. I, start, I just start thinking about the way that things work. So, um, I'm, I do put everything into it just naturally. So, and then, when it comes to my own music, it's 100% autobiographical. Um, stop looking at it. Come on. Go over there, you're making me nervous. I'm sorry. Really? Sorry. Jeez. I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, but when it comes to my, yeah. to my records, like I, they're 100% autobiographical and I really, um, I'm usually, I am writing about the way that things used to be, so. Yeah, so it's just, uh, first thing, when obviously listening to your song that you, you wrote and you're performing, that uh, in this new album we have a lot of different, of course, feelings and situations that you, you made you made us for uh, with your music. I mean, we made us feel this. And uh, about about this album, what what are the things that you, you care most? I don't want just to ask this song that you prefer, but uh, what are the topics that you love most, what you wanted most to tell people to this? Well, like, I didn't know that I had a common theme running through the record, but when I listened back to it, I realized I did. I mean, I guess, like, now that I listen to it, it does feel like two worlds of, of death and love coming together. I guess the way I would describe it is, like, when I was young, um, and I I was really aware of my own mortality. Like, I, when I realized that we were all going to die, that kind of overshadowed my existence. But then I also, as I got older, like, became a teenager, um, I had fleeting moments of happiness when I started falling in love and meeting amazing people. And so... Um, it's just really, like, I think the record is a combination of those two feelings and worlds coming together in a gorgeous soundscape that Emil Haney designed. Like, I, just, I started working with this amazing producer, Emil, and he, he's been, like, a hip-hop producer yep. for the last 10 years, started working with Eminem, and he came into my life and started putting, like, heavier fat beats underneath the tracks and, um, um, like, soundscaping the record, putting things into each song that I really, that, like, brought the songs to life, like, and off to the races. He put in kids screaming at the yeah. swimming pool. And like, and this is what makes us girls. He put in and like car alarms going off and crickets chirping. I see. And about your music in general, your your career, your uh, your way, uh, you feel something uh, different from what you hear from many other artists' music. There's something that makes you say, "My music is." That's a word that can identify more than without um, uh, telling anything bad about other artists, of course. That's but a good question. That's... Well, my music is very real. Yes, that's the, the definition that you would you would do to this. Yeah, only because like the lyrics are autobiographical and like I helped compose the actual record, so it's very much it's personal. It's personal. Thank you. I you listen many times to your album, and I uh, my favorite track is uh, Dark Paradise. Do you like it? Yes, it's, it's beautiful. Really? It's the, the most beautiful for me. Do you love it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think that it should be the next single, maybe. That's funny because um, I was just in Germany yesterday, and um. I signed to Universal Germany first, like a year and a half ago, and um, they want Dark Paradise to be the single too. You should, you should uh, listen to them. <laughs> I, well, I love that song. It's very uh, emotional. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's amazing because like I, like I was saying, I met Emil Haney first, who started kind of fattening up the mood of the songs with really heavy beats, and then he introduced me to Larry Gold, who's been like a famous string composer in classical music for the past 30 years, and his strings really brought like the song to life, you know, it just made it sound really gorgeous and... So the, 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 the chorus... The, yeah, do you very, like it? Yeah, I That's one of my favorite chorus, me too. Um, what, do, what does inspire you during the uh, uh, um, writing process? During the writing process? It kind of depends on where I am, like, for this record, I wrote it in three different places. I started in London, then went back home to New York, and then traveled to California. But what I used to do was take a lot of walks, um, like, th through Manhattan, and just, I'd start thinking about the way that things used to be. You, you mentioned twice in your songs, uh, Coney Island. Is it a, a special place for you? Mm. When I was like, first got to New York when I was 18, I didn't know anybody, so I'd just take the train down to the beach, all the way at the tip of Manhattan, of New York City, and I'd just walk along the boardwalk for hours to start writing my songs, because I didn't really <laughs> know anyone yet, so I'd just sing into my phone and look <laughs> at the ocean. I couldn't believe that like the ocean was so close to the city, which was so big. I thought it was beautiful. And most of my inspirations for the record have been like different different places, beautiful places to me. Uh, which is the difference between America and uh, uh, maybe UK, Glasgow, where do you... Well, uh, the people are different from one place to another. Like, the boys in London are very clever. They're very quick to tell 
tell a story and tell a joke. Um, and also, it's just a different culture in the UK. You know, people are really aware of what's going on. Like, they watch the news a lot. They're, they know what's happening. Um, and then in America, um, I feel like people are sort of living their own lives for themselves, like as individuals and their individual families. And I, I don't know, musical taste is different. Lots of different uh, you said that you take inspiration from different artists, such as uh, uh, Frank Sinatra, Nirvana, Eminem. Uh, how did you deal with this different kind of music? How did I deal with it? Yes. Like, how did I find it? How, how do you uh, mix it in your music? Like my music? Pop, okay, pop, well, like, so. when I found Eminem for the first time, he really changed my life because I didn't know that music could be intelligent. Like, he was talking about his own life, and, like, he wasn't just rhyming over music just for rhyme's sake, like he was really talking about the way that things were, and so that made me think like I could also, I wouldn't rap, but I could also, you know, like talk about the way that things actually were, instead of just making stupid music, like, and to try and sell it, um, so, I mean, he, and also he's a, he's a genius, I mean, he's, he's just, a, he happens to be a genius, so, I love him, and then of course I love Frank Sinatra, just because for the, when I heard his voice for the first time, I couldn't believe it was real, it was just the most, he had like a golden voice, like a golden tone on his voice, so, you know, like, Eminem was the master of lyrics, but Frank Sinatra was like the master of vocals. So I really just like the masters from every different genre. Um, and of course, when I saw Kurt Cobain for the first time, and I could, I just felt I, I felt like I knew what he was singing about. And so, would you like to collaborate with Eminem? I do really love Eminem. If you well, usually when people ask me that question, I usually say no, I'm just doing my own thing. But I have to say, I fucking love Eminem. Uh, which artist do you uh, do you like? Do you want to collaborate with? If you if you could from the past or the present, mm. maybe working with Frank Sinatra would be. Uh, I'd like to uh, I'd like to work with Elvis. <laughs> I'd like to fucking do things with Elvis. <laughs> I'd like to make out with Elvis. Um, let's see, Elvis. I don't know. Maybe Elvis is your uh, million dollar man. Maybe. <laughs> uh, we noticed that you acted in a somehow theatrical way when you sing. Uh, is it true that you you act when you when you sing? Um, I'm not a very good actress. But, um, I, I, I'm not really, I don't really consider myself to be acting when I'm singing, but I usually just try and, like, let the words kind of flow through my fingertips sometimes, so my hands end up looking dramatic, um, but usually I'm just trying to make sure that my voice is evoking the message that I meant when I was singing it, so it's more about, like, the vocals, but, I don't know, sometimes I get into it physically, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's your natural way to express what you're it, saying. It's a little bit of my natural way, which is a bit of a strange way. <laughs> I understand that, but it is natural. Uh, in your song, we can hear orchestral influences, organic sound, but also uh, electronic and maybe influences from uh, uh, hip hop. How do how does th those genres come together? That's a good question. I mean, like like I was saying before, um, Emil Haney, who is like an amazing hip hop producer, yeah. is really good friends with Larry Gold, who is an amazing string composer. And like when I talk to the guys on the phone, I'd say, you know, if I was talking to them about like maybe the song This Is What Makes Us Girls, I would say to them, you know, think about the film score for American Beauty by Thomas Newman. That meets Bruce Springsteen in the 80s, meets girls sneaking out in the hot summertime in Miami or something. And what I try and do is, like, give good direction with pictures, and then I let Emil and Larry join worlds together, Larry with his orchestra from Philadelphia and um, Emil with his beats that he programs. So... I try and paint pictures for them with words, and then they send things back to me, and it's always amazing. Uh, because uh, uh, After the Races, for example, yeah. has uh, a strong hip-hop influence. Yeah. Uh, have you ever heard uh, the last album of Kanye West? Uh, which one is his last uh, album? My, uh, my Dark Twisted Fantasy. Yes, yes. Um, I've, I've heard all his singles off of it. Uh, for me, there is a... a, a um, they are maybe... Um, That's funny, because Kanye loves that song, After the Races. Yes, because it, those uh, alarms, or those sounds that... Yeah. Uh, that you, that you listen when, uh, and they come from nowhere. <coughs> They're also in, uh, in Kanye's <coughs> album. Which one? The sound? Yes, yes. Are the they? alarm sound. The alarm sound mm -hmm. is also in Kanye. If you, if you. You're kidding uh, me. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Neil did work with Kanye on my Dark Twisted Fantasy. I think I don't know how many tracks he worked on, but I mean, I think from what I understand, Kanye also has a love for gorgeous things and gorgeous strings. That's yes. just something we both happen to love, like have a respect for like cinematic, orchestral, you know, uplifting sounds that. You know where the melody of the strings tells the story, the same story that the words do. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it's a difficult task to take yeah, on. It's a combination between lyrics and sound. Yeah, because you know sometimes like it, when you watch movies and you just listen to film scores, like those melodies tell a story, and um, the strings on my record, I think, tell their own story too. I think we just wanted always the last question from you, very simple. It's just to know if you have in the future plans for Italy, yes. for other coming back and uh, meeting you in TV or in live shows. And well, the first thing I'm going to do. Well, I'd like to do because I have time in March when I'm not doing anything. I'm just coming back to Italy just to see Italy. Because here I am for one day, and so I can't yeah. see anything. So 
I think March is, a, is the best month. Actually, that's the spring is, month, is really good. I'd like to just come back and see everything because I've really been waiting to come to Italy for my whole life. And then what I'd like to do is hold just two shows, like in a church, um, just in the center, like of Milan, and just then meet everyone afterwards. Because like for my shows in Europe, when I went on my tour in October, yeah. I got to meet everyone. You know, like I have friends and fans in Germany and and like London that I still talk to all the time. So I kind of like that connection with people from Italy too. Oh. Wait, one again. Give you my phone. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, we, have, we really, really thank you for thank your time. You and you. Thank you for your questions. They're so smart. They're about music. They're so respectful. Like, I really appreciate it. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. And good luck. <laughs>